Okay. First of all, Akhi Abu Bakr, in Islam, things are crystal clear and it's black and white. Nowadays, under the pressure of the media, of liberal organizations, of ignorant people, of hypocrites who undermine Islam, and of disbelievers, the Muslims are becoming weak. Unfortunately, under such pressure, a lot of the Muslims are compromising their religion. And this is a great and severe and serious mistake. All the scholars and da'is must stay and remain steadfast. We should never allow the enemy to advance. Day, the rights of the husband over his wife, which means this is what the wife has to do. Talk about a verse in the Quran um, uh, that uh, people use, or I guess I've heard people use, that supports domestic abuse. So I'll leave that with you. Well, while I, I will concede right away that there are hadiths which uh, uh, do concede uh, or, or do allow for um, men to beat their, their wives uh, to a certain extent. Um, uh, and, and I'm glad we've uh, dealt with problematic hadith more generally so that we know how to conceptualize and how to frame uh, these hadiths within that broader um, study of taking a balanced approach to, to hadith. It's permissible for a woman to work providing, number one, her husband allows her to, number two, and this is an important condition, there is no fitna, there is no free mixing. She is not in danger, endangering her religion by exposing herself without hijab or free mixing or being in a place that she shouldn't be in. If these conditions are not fulfilled, it is totally prohibited for a woman to work. Islam has laid down certain rights of the husband which his wife must fulfill and guidelines which must be observed. The basic duties of a wife are as follows. He says, firstly, she must protect the wealth and property of her husband. She must not be destructive or abusive of the wealth and property in any way. She must abstain from unnecessary expenditure, extravagance and wastage. She should spend only with the pleasure and permission of her husband. Being very demanding will strain the marriage at some point. And I repeat that. Being very demanding will strain the marriage at some point. You have the full right to prevent her from working, even if you don't have any reason. Simon says, I don't want her to work. This is your God-given right as a husband. At this point, he says, she must never unnecessarily relate what goes on between herself and her husband to others. You have the full right to prevent her from working, even if you don't have any reason. Simon says, I don't want her to work. This is your God-given right as a husband. She must abstain from nagging, from screaming, from shouting, from swearing, etc. She should not get annoyed at every small issue that occurs. Rather, she should try to understand that not everything will always happen the way she wants it to happen. She must carefully consider the likes and dislikes of her husband too. There is one guardian, one leader of the house, and that is the man. Usually he's the one wearing the pants. Nowadays in the West, it's the opposite and the other way around. It's the women who wear the pants, unfortunately, and this is totally wrong. So hold your grounds. You don't want her to work and you're providing for her, say to her, no. But rather fulfill them with the woman who has been made his lawful wife and has become permissible for him. For this reason, the husband must be granted the opportunity of fulfilling his desires whenever he feels so. The wife must not unnecessarily refuse and she must not unnecessarily present lame excuses. If she is defiant and she is insisting and breaking your word and not adhering to what you say, you have the full right to admonish her, to remind her of Allah Azza wa Jal, to follow all the steps needed in 
bringing her, bringing her back to her senses. Say the Prophet ﷺ has gone to the extent of explaining that even if a woman is busy cooking or doing something else and the husband calls her, it is her duty to actually respond and to go to see to the husband. A husband may desire, subhanAllah, actually Rasulullah ﷺ has taught us so much and he has actually taught us that look when the husband has a desire obviously the wife must not present lame excuses if nothing works bring a meditator uh, from your family an arbitrator from your family and hers to talk it over if the, it doesn't work ditch her and obviously they need to understand that it is against the Islamic teachings to unnecessarily abstain and to actually turn a blind eye. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to be steadfast. The result of this is that uh, whatever the Quran did not address uh, or the Prophet peace be upon him did not quite correct, um, that has remained as, as it was. And whereas the, some things were left for later generations to improve upon uh, as the circumstances would allow, um, we did not allow it, even though the circumstances have changed and the circumstances do now allow for these improvements in terms of the development uh, of rights of women.